we are in a home studio from one of the members of Euphoria. And uh, today we're going to be talking to these guys about their, their latest EP and what's going on in their lives. So thanks very much, guys. And who am I joined with on the couch here? I'm Michael. I'm the singer. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Daniel Sully. I play bass in the band. Uh, awesome. Multidisciplinary artist. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. This is great. Uh, now, how did you guys get together as a band? Okay, well, I'll take that one. Essentially, Euphoria started about four and a half years ago mm -hmm. as a recording project. It was just me and a producer named Tony. Mm -hmm. uh, I took that to a studio, my songs, I guess, and mm -hmm. um, we made a six-track EP titled Imagining. Mm -hmm. Uh, once that was done, I kind of shopped it around to try and find players to join the band, mm -hmm. and uh, I ended up finding a bunch of Humber musicians. Okay. Right? So I figured, hey, why not try Humber? Everybody can play music there, right? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, ended up making a band with all Humber musicians, and then uh, that lasted for about a year. Uh, in 2013, when the Hard Rock Rising competition, mm -hmm. and we had like a, a lot of momentum going, things were going well. The bass player decides to leave the band, so kind of just like dropped off a cliff there. Mm -hmm. For the next like eight months to a year, we we're reconstructing, and mm -hmm. we brought Daniel into the band, and now we have our current lineup, which is myself, Daniel playing bass, Adam Brick is playing guitar, mm -hmm. and Julian Bigra is playing drums. Fantastic, fantastic. I, Sorry, I actually. What he didn't mention is that we grew up together. I mm -hmm. went to the same elementary school, so throughout the years I, I followed his bands. I would go and watch his shows and nice. so forth. Then eventually I went to one of his shows, and uh, I remember watching the bass player on stage and thinking, I can do that, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And then after the show, I went up to him like, I can do that. And he's <laughs> like, oh, that's great, because we need someone to do that. And I said, I can do that. So That's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Great fit. That's, an, that's, that's wonderful. Now, for someone who's never heard your sound before, how would you describe your music? Uh, I guess the genre would be hard rock mm -hmm. alternative. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're going for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we sound like a mix between Billy Talent, mm -hmm. Incubus, Foo Fighters, and our newest inspiration is kind of like Royal Blood. Mm -hmm. A couple more could throw in there, Our Lady Peace, Sun 41, Trouble Charger, those are kind of some big influences on yeah. that. For sure, I mean, I, I would say that's a pretty accurate uh, portrayal. I think in my review of the album that I just did, I said, you know, your voice was pretty spot on to Billy, Billy Talent, so for sure, definitely there. Uh, now. Canadian influences, I think you've just crossed off that question. <laughs> Obviously, you've got quite a few listed in there. Um, you know, it's it's pretty awesome. You were mentioning, um, or you know, I've, I've seen that you've performed actually with some of these influences on stage before, uh, Billy Talent being one of them. Yeah, that's right. That was Daniel's first show, actually. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Euphoria. Yeah, the deep end, right? It, was, right. it was pretty exciting. He got to play his first show with us, and we got mm -hmm. to meet Billy Talent and hang out with them. They're, they're really cool guys and like down to earth, not uh, heads up in the air like you would assume a rock star would be. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that was a really exciting show. And then at that point, I think Daniel was just a, a fill in uh, for the one night. And then, uh, you know, he just rocks so hard. We had to have him all the time. That's awesome. Any plans to, to work with Billy Talent again in the future? That would be awesome. Uh, I don't know how that's going to happen. I guess <laughs> it's just the. Uh, the magic and luck of the mm -hmm. music industry. Absolutely, for sure. Now you've got um, just a brand new EP out and you've got some pretty um, iconic people working with you, some Canadian legends working with you uh, on the album, Steve Malella and uh, James Black from Finger Eleven, mm -hmm. you know, those awesome gentlemen. Um, so, first of all, what's Steve's role in the album with you guys? Steve is a co-writer on the songs mm -hmm. and he's the producer. Okay. And James? James is directing our singles music video. Awesome, awesome. Um, and then you guys uh, had a show not too long ago, last week at uh, Hard Rock Cafe, your EP release party, and you actually even had James performing at the show. Yeah, it was it was an awesome night. Uh, do you want us to talk about this one, Dan? Uh, sure, yeah. I, uh, I aim for the complete artwork. You know, mm -hmm. the music is great, but I aim, you know, through art, to make an impact, transform lives. So mm -hmm. with the event, we wanted more than just, you know, some technical feat of musicianship. Mm -hmm. But to, you know, give people a good time, give them a night to remember, give them something that will inspire the, the genius within them, because mm -hmm. I think all great art does that, inspires our own genius. Mm -hmm. 
and so we had a night to where we had uh, a lot of visual art and we had the music and uh, the intent was to have uh, projections and video as well mm -hmm. and to, to get people out to be interactive to encourage the dancing and the, the socialization mm -hmm. um, we pulled it off pretty well I think. yeah nice. we had a very great turnout you know the hard rock is an interesting venue because it's big mm -hmm. so it, the room is kind of sparse but then when uh, when we got on stage everybody came out from the little nooks of the room and mm -hmm. it's, it filled up and you know there were a bunch of bodies and we actually this was one of the first times that we incorporated uh, a light show. We had a fog machine and we had lights choreographed to the music as well. Awesome. So all to create that whole experience. We also invited a couple artists that are doing live portraits and we had people showing their work just so, you know, there's never a dull mo moment, you know, people can constantly be engaged. Yeah, literally every area of the room where you look, there's like a canvas or a painting or yes. some kind of cool art thing to check out. That's great. Yes. That's great. Good uh, connecting or ticking the boxes on all the senses. That's great. Good. Should have had some food there. That would have been good. Mm -hmm. Get taste buds going. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did you get connected with these guys? With Steve? Yes. Okay, this this is a pretty cool story, and hopefully it doesn't take up too much time. But essentially, my father grew up with Rob and Arnold Lang. Mm -hmm. Rob Lang is the manager and CEO of Coalition Entertainment, mm -hmm. and Arnold was the producer for Our Lady Peace right. and Finger Eleven. Right. Simple plan. And Simple Plan. That's right. right. And like he's probably one of the most well-known producers, for, especially for, sure. for rock music in Canada. Right? That's right. Growing absolutely. up, I had "Clumsy" by Our Lady Peace. I bought that CD twice. Okay, <laughs> that's, that how, that's how big of an influence <laughs> it was on me. Yeah. Um, and uh, now we're working with his protege, essentially. Yeah. yeah, Arnold had trained Steve yeah. for five years in California, mm -hmm. so he kind of took on all his production. Mm -hmm. Uh, skills. Amazing. Yeah, and uh, um, Rob was the one that introduced us to Steve wow. because he's he's managing Finger Eleven, mm -hmm. and uh, we got to a point in our careers where we felt, you know, we were making money, mm -hmm. we had good songs, we had good material, and we wanted to work with a producer that was going to bring out the best in it. And Rob suggested Steve. We listened to his stuff, and we just we were blown away. Mm -hmm. And after after finishing the first song with him, we we're just like, yeah, that's the guy. And it came out pretty good. That's amazing. I mean, it, it's nice to work with such a recognizable name, but you really need it to fit. And it seems like through the music in your EP that you guys found a fit with each other. So, and not cool. only is he very talented, but his professionalism is inspiring. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's so driven that we are driven through that. So it's a real, it's a real treat to work with. A great mentor. That's fantastic. Uh, so um, you've got some shows coming up for the rest of the summer. I know you guys are actually playing downtown Toronto tomorrow. Right. Yeah, yeah. Dundas Square is part of Youth Day. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. That's probably going to be a pretty busy scene. Yes, it, it gets crazy. We don't have a long set, but mm -hmm. um, we know that the media we're going to get, is it's going to look amazing. The for video sure. and photography on that Dundas Square, oh, we yeah. think so amazing. That's for sure. Nice, nice and bright, which is always such a random collective of people, as random as you'll ever get. Yeah. So well, there's, I forget what the website said for how many performances there's going to oh, be. Oh, there's a hundred. hundred. It's insane. Over a hundred, yeah. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus there's like five pokey stops there. Like, it's just going to be Which is going to draw the people up there. That's amazing. Now, what does the rest of 2016 look like for your band, then? we got a couple more tour dates. Mm -hmm. Next weekend we're playing uh, London on Friday mm -hmm. and Peterborough on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then in August we're playing a rib fest in Woodbridge, mm -hmm. heading to Guelph, Mississauga. we got a, a, quite a few shows lined up in August and then uh, we're hoping to book fall tour dates as well. Yeah, I think the to next... Go for the album, you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, the next big step I think is heading east. Getting on a, we're doing this sort of mini tour to break the ice, mm -hmm. you know, so we're doing a lot of weekend tour, so mm -hmm. we'll go out for a weekend, hit up a couple of cities. Right. But we've yet to do like three weeks in a van, which is... You need that experience. It's bonding, yeah. and it's, sure. uh, yeah, it definitely develops the band. It's like for a time sure. machine, you know, you, you, you learn a lot like for that. Sure. So we're hoping to get to the East Coast because it's supposed to have uh, quite the music scene. Absolutely. East Coast Connections. Look um, it up. <laughs> uh, we've got quite a few uh, Canadian Beats counterparts out there, actually, in a lot of the, the venues. But I've heard, you know, there's some great venues out there. Lots of little small ones, but, you know, the, the communities really get around those venues and really support the so music. I was, I was told if you can get on the circuit, you can make 
a living, just you going from bar to bar, from town to town, what if you can just get in that circuit? So. We would love to go to places where people want to see new music. That's kind of, yeah, and I mean, we're capable of pretty much, we, we have a bunch of different sets, we've got hours of music that mm -hmm. we can play through, so it's, we've got a lot. That we got it covered. Yeah. <laughs> Covers. Do you guys do you guys play cover songs? Yeah, ever? We, do. we do. We have like a three-hour set with covers and mm -hmm. originals. We do, we do a monthly thing at Young and Ag Young and Eglinton at the Rose and Crown there. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got another. We've got like a couple of residencies around the, the GTA. So. Nice. And we don't really have to compromise. We play all our favorite stuff, like mid '90s to modern day rock hits. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to go to that show? Yeah. Now, what's your favorite go-to cover song then? Ooh, um, Probably like within the last year, mm -hmm. we played that too. Yesterday, I'll tell you what we've been playing a lot lately because mm -hmm. it just, well, I love to see the crowd just enjoying themselves. So, some yesterday we did Red Flag by Billy Talent. Yeah. We've been doing a lot of uh, Fat Lip, mm -hmm. Song 41. Mm -hmm. um, and um, go to the Royal Blood song. Figure it out. Figure it out. Well. Yeah. That's a, mm -hmm. a little bit more modern. I'd like to see that one live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, Fight or Flight. Uh, what was um, what was the meaning behind this video? I know there's been some discussion the video, about the it. video or the song. I guess this I couldn't tell you about the video because oh. I haven't seen it. Right, <laughs> but the song itself. I know there's been some discussion on your website about that. Yeah, essentially the song uh, was inspired by one of our uh, guitarists' snowboarding mm -hmm. accidents. Right. He had um, he had been snowboarding, and this was like a day before like a big show we had to play at Hard Rock this, Cafe. This was the show that I went to watch and said, I could do that. Yeah. So then oh, yeah. I see Adam with a cast on his hand playing the <laughs> guitar and I'm thinking, is this really happening? Like, yeah. This guy has a cast on his hand. He wiped and he out, his <laughs> yeah, he wiped out hit a tree, dislocated his thumb, and he told us like, at, in that moment he, he had a choice. He's like, am I going to wait for someone to rescue me or am I just going to get on my board and go down and, and get help? Wow. So he, he did it went down the hill with his mm -hmm. busted finger and uh, he got help and that story kind of inspired me to say you know what it's frustrating mm -hmm. to talk to someone and they can't make up their mind mm -hmm. you know what I mean like mm -hmm. do it or get out mm -hmm. decide or get out mm -hmm. fight or flight nice and uh, yeah just inspired lyrics from multiple situations where I've been frustrated with someone not able to make a decision. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's fantastic. It, uh, it ended up being you know, so perfect and, and a great way to, you know, capture your essence on, on that EP for sure, for sure. Now, uh, when you're not in the studio, when you're not on tour, what do the guys of Euphoria like to do for fun? For fun? Daniel's a pretty heavy artist in the visual scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I enjoy creating. Uh, I mean, I, in my youth, I spent a lot of time studying, like uh, I guess, meditation and mm -hmm. sort of art of the art of living. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately, the uh, the way we live our lives is the greatest work of art that we'll ever work on. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly just working on myself. Mm -hmm. uh, art is a great uh, process because it I can use it just to enter head spaces that are more positive and uh, life affirming rather than life denying. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, I spend a lot of time uh, creating. I read a great, uh, I've done a lot of reading. I just read, finished a great novel. It was really wonderful. Kurt Vonnegut, uh, who was recommended to me by someone really fun to read. Mm -hmm. um, watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> and that's life right there. Yeah, yeah. I love, yeah. yeah I'm not as cool as Daniel. I play a lot of video games. <laughs> I love video games as a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love watching movies. I spend a lot of time with my family too, mm -hmm. and my girlfriend. And mm -hmm. That takes up quite a bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, what's the last concert you guys attended as fans? Mm. Memorable one? Probably the Finger Eleven concert at the Phoenix. That was a great show. Yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. You should check out my footage for that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Well, uh, a few months back, I went to see Tal Wilkenfeld at the Horseshoe Tavern. Okay. And she heard, she rose to fame playing with Jeff Beck. She's a bass player oh, wow. from, I think, uh, New Zealand, I think she's from. Mm -hmm. And she's just this young girl, but here she's on stage with this rock legend. And everybody's inspiring, like uh, encouraging her to go and do her mm -hmm. own thing. So she came to the Horseshoe and I, I went to see her. I think that was the last one that I was like excited yeah. to, to really go and see. That's just such a great venue. 
you know. It doesn't yeah. matter who they could put on stage there. I mean, that would have been a wonderful show, but just that stage and, and all the history there is such a, it's a great landmark. Oh yeah, I forgot. A couple of weeks ago, I went to Rockfest in Montebello, Quebec. Oh, that's a big one. That was pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some 41, Billy mm -hmm. Talent, Limp Bizkit. Mm -hmm. Who else is there? The Used. Blink-182. Blink-182 was there. Yeah, yeah it was there was, pretty. And some local bands were there, too. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there was a local Green Day tribute new band that was there from, from this area. Green Day. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, in 20 words or less, describe Euphoria. That feeling you get when you wake up in the morning and you just know it's going to be an awesome day. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. All right, three words. Ready? Liberty through warriorship. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's pretty deep. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> so you've got two choices there. That's awesome. And that ties into the whole theme of the fight or flight and the whole mm -hmm. album. There's these undertones of revolution and, and uh, stand you. Standing you need to fight for yourself. You need to represent yourself. You can't let somebody else speak and live your life for you. You can't you need to or make decisions. You need for to you. go out and grab life with your own hands. And so, I'm getting to 20 words now. So far. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. Uh, this has been this has been great. You know, we look forward to you know if you're in the area and you can stop by one of these shows absolutely do that and if you're from the east coast and can book these guys up, i'm sure they'd love to, to check out some venues out your way so thank you so much guys thank wonderful. you this has been nicole wolf from canadian beats and we'll catch you next time